All right, hello. How is everybody doing tonight? Welcome, welcome. Lure Painting Live, Friday Night Edition. Saturday, it's Saturday. My gosh, the days go too fast. I don't even know what day it is anymore. But welcome. Um, hope everybody's doing well. I'm going to pull up my feed on here so I can see everybody. Um, so how's everybody doing tonight? You guys have a good weekend so far? We had some warm weather. It's windy, but, um, you know, it was a good day. So no complaints here. So I've been hard at work trying to get ready for next weekend's live sale. So if you guys haven't turned on notifications on my page so that you get notified anytime I post something new, uh, please do add those. Um, the reason being that um, I'm going to make a video sometime this week here explaining the rules of the sale um, and how you uh, claim items that you want, uh, how I'll process the orders and um, what kind of deals and stuff I'm going to be offering. So make sure you turn on your notifications so that you get that um, information. Hi, Dad. Hey, Rodney. I uh, hope everybody is doing well tonight. But yeah, turn on notifications, share the event. It's a super fun event. I do it only sometimes twice a year, but reliably, I always do it right before the holidays. Sorry. <laughs> I think that was an accident. Uh, Chris is messing with the TV trying to broadcast. Um, we're trying to figure out how to broadcast this on the TV that we have in here um, for the show. So he's messing with it. So anyways. Um, I don't think you meant for that to be so loud, but that's okay. So we, um, we're getting ready for that. I've been spending a lot of time finishing up a bunch of new jigs and chatter baits for the sale. And then, um, we're also just, I'm getting organized. So this, the whole sale goes smoothly. So that'll be 5 PM next Saturday. So I won't be on obviously painting live cause we'll be doing a sale. So, um, any, it's also very possible the sale will run into Sunday. If we get running really late on Saturday night and we're still not through all the items, it'll just start over on Sunday at five o'clock. So hope to see you all there. So I'm going to go ahead if I can figure out how, if I can figure out what the heck is going on here um, with this stupid thing, then I will post the, uh, I post the details of all of that in the comments, but um, it's just not, this isn't cooperating with me right now. It's funny how like the whole thing um, <laughs> is um, now it's saying live chat, which is like not the way it normally displays for me. So this whole thing is all screwed up on my end. But anyway, share the feed tonight if you can, guys. I appreciate the shares. And um, yeah, so we'll get started tonight. We're going to do a, a black crappie and... Um, Hang on a second. I'm just still trying to figure this out. I'm sorry, guys. Here, I think I can figure it out. So, hmm. We're going to do a black volume up if you can, please. You're going to you're going to watch the sale. Got had to buy parts for your truck. Well, that's always a bummer when you have to pay for stuff like that. No, I understand. Um, I'm going to do a crappie swim bait tonight. I don't know. Um, we'll see how it turns out. I've got myself a nice reference photo selected so i've got some stencils ready to go good so yeah chris got it broadcast on the tv so that'll be helpful for sure for the live sale so we put a smaller tv out here and moved another tv we just moved some stuff around a little while ago so um now there's a we just have a smaller tv in here and that should help us to be able to see what's going on we're talking about four million devices to worry about. So let me go ahead and get myself situated. I was um, clear cutting jigs today, jig heads. And um, so that's why I've got crock pots in the background. If you're wondering, everybody always asks, what's the crock pot for? It's uh, my clear coat is in there. So I use a Lumi UV, it's a dip. And um, I have, I have two running at once, and then I hang my lures from this wire here, and they drip back down into the can because um, you can reuse it as long as you don't cure it, you can use it, reuse the excess. And um, so that's what I was doing all day. Well, not all day. I mean, I hung out with my kid and the dog and 
the husband and all that stuff, but anyway. Um, how's everybody doing? All right. What else did I miss? Anything here? Sorry, I'm just making sure I don't miss any of y'all's comments. How does the sale work? Uh, John, I am going to make a video on my page explaining how the sale works, how to claim items, and how I will send invoices after the sale. So please turn notifications on on my page. Make sure you like the page and turn on notifications. And all those details will be covered in the um, video. It can get a little confusing to try and explain how it works. Um, so I'll make sure I have it all laid out pretty clearly in that video. Um, it's not an auction. I can tell you it's not an auction. Um, I just give you the price and then um, first person to comment, um, if I have five, the first five people to comment, that they want that item will be um, it'll be added to their invoice. So it's a little bit. You want to make sure you have a good internet connection. If you don't have a good internet internet connection, it's definitely going to make it harder for you to to get the items you want, and maybe frustrating also. So just keep that in mind. I almost always have somebody upset at the end of the sale because they weren't able to claim items they wanted. And uh, I try to avoid that, but I can't control everybody's Wi-Fi speed, unfortunately. So um, if you really want to participate and you want it to be a good experience, make sure wherever you're watching from has a good, strong Wi-Fi signal, okay? I very can't say that enough because it makes a big difference. All right. And I'll have deals, too. So I'll be doing, like, you know, buy a certain amount and get this much percentage off type of thing is how I usually do it. That's the easiest way for me to give you guys a deal for, for buying stuff. And then I'll do some giveaways too. So we'll, we'll pause here and there and do some random giveaways. And you will need to be present to win. So I'll set aside a bunch of stuff to give away. So. It'll be fun. It's always really fun. Everybody always wants me to do more of those throughout the year, but I like I wipe out almost my entire inventory usually when I do a sale like that. So then I'm starting from scratch every time, which at this time of year is okay because you know everybody, a lot of people are hunting right now and uh, it's getting colder, so um, it's good to start start fresh with some new stuff for the new year and. You know, I'll start working on all that stuff as soon as the sale items are shipped. And my goal is to get everything to you guys by Christmas. So I want to make wanted to make sure I did it like mid-November-ish so that I wouldn't have any problem getting those out in time in case you were buying Christmas presents. So anyhow, I just put Steinel Res primer on there. I kind of grabbed every paint I thought I might want to use. And threw it up here. There's a bunch of greens, golds, yellows, whites. Um, I think I forgot to grab black. So I might have to pop my head back to my paint buckets and grab me a black at some point here. Um, what kind of jigs do you do? Um, right now we're doing uh, poison head jigs and football jigs and we're gonna have what's the other kind that we have uh, flipping jigs some flipping bass jigs. jigs bass jigs yeah. we um the hook chatterbaits. oh chatterbaits yeah we have some the hooks first one of our molds is on back order so we're kind of in a standstill in that regard but we'll have some other stuff we'll have eight alabama rigs yeah and then we're gonna have some are you gonna have those for the sale no. okay we're going to start making Alabama rigs too. And um, Chris is working on that. So he's doing all the lead pouring and wire forms and stuff like that. Um, and I am doing all the painting and clear coating and putting everything together. So um, yeah, it'll be good. We'll, we'll keep working on, you know, getting some new stuff. If you have any requests, 
you know, definitely feel free to reach out. Let me know. Um, and we'll do custom orders if we have the mold that you're looking for. We'll do the best we can to make whatever you want. So example number 35, I want to. Yeah, you'll just write like when you type in a comment during the live sale, you'll write like we'll say we're on number 35. Here's the item. We'll show you the item. And then if you want it, you type in 35. And then if you want to write X2 or whatever, and then we'll put your name down. I have a spreadsheet made and everything to set aside everything. Hi, Paul. How's it going? Uh, I Are these swim baits you're painting yours or lures from other makers? So uh, this particular one is um, a Ganterelle knockoff lure. So these are all Chinese manufacturers. They make all these baits anyway in China. So um, it's basically like extremely similar to the original with just a few minor differences. Um, and so they can market it as like a generic version or whatever. Um, and some of them are better than others. And I try not, I try to stick to the ones I know that swim well, you know, that we have used and use on a regular basis ourselves. Um, and so I do that. And then I also repaint like uh, handmade resin lures. I can re repaint those if you send them to me. Um, but I don't make any baits by hand yet. That's not to say that that won't happen. But we do make our jigs and chatter baits and all that stuff. Plastics. And plastics, yeah, from scratch here. So, but the baits themselves that I paint, uh, the, the plastic baits are not made by us. All right, so hello, Monty. I'm going to flip over here to my reference photo real quick and take a peek at what I was going to paint. Um, I didn't send it to myself. See, I always forget something. It's okay. It's not that hard to find a crappie picture, so. Crappie! Um, I have done crappies, and I have a really good black crappie pattern, but I'm going to just do a twist on it and a little update. Okay, so I did a white style res um, layer, which is just my primer that I use. It's really good. Um, it's a really good primer for water-based paints. It helps the paint stick better to the plastic because they're really not very, um, they're not really meant to adhere to plastic. Createx paints are meant more for like fabrics and stuff like that. Uh, did you know that? Create text. The text in create text is, means textile. So they're more intended for, um, yeah, not for plastic. So you can, you know, obviously the clear coat will protect that from falling apart. But if the clear coat should get compromised for some reason, a good primer will help your paint stay on despite that water getting, you know, through the barrier coat or whatever. Does that make sense? If that makes sense to you. This is just white paint. This is, uh, I, I mixed it. I pre-mixed my white and black. This is um, Wicked Detail Flat Opaque White. I know it's a long, long name for a paint color, but that's what it's called. And I prefer that over the regular Createx Opaque White, which is a really grainy, um, chalky kind of texture. I think the Wicked paints are smoother. They're a little more expensive, but I think it's worth it. And they last a long time. So um, unless you're doing like a ton of baits like me, I mean, I can go through a bottle of paint fairly quickly if I'm using water base. Um, but for most people, these bottles will last a really long time. I'm gra going to grab a new paintbrush under here for my stir stick because I, I can't find mine. I was doing clear coating. I wasn't painting the last few days. So... All right, so I'm just cleaning out the white here now, and I'll just wipe this out. And then I'm going to do um, a little bit of, I'm thinking here, how I'm going to do this. We're going to do some interesting layering, and I'm going to try some new stuff here. So I'm pulling up a good reference photo here. I have one. There it is. I found it. I found my reference photo that I had saved. It's right here. Okay, so we're going to do, um, I'm thinking, I'm first, I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to, I'm sorry, 
I'm going to net this whole bait first, I think. Um, and then we're going to do some scaling. I hope this is not a mistake, but I guess we'll find out. I might do the bottom a little bit. Now, nah. let's just stick with what we're doing here. So I'm going to take this out of here and I'm going to net the whole thing. Let me heat set this just to make sure it's dry. What would I charge to paint a couple swim baits? David, if you can send me um, a PM through Facebook or email me at coloradolures at gmail.com. Uh, it'll depend on what it is and how big it is. But yes, I can paint swim baits for you. Usually I charge $5 an inch for swim baits, but it depends what we're talking about. And, you know, I want to make sure I know what I'm getting myself into before I make, before I give you a firm price. <laughs> All right. So this is just some actual loofah material from like a shower, a little shower poof. So I'm just going to pin this on here with some binder clips. I find that binder clips are the easiest to keep flat against the bait. So you want to check your front and back while you're wrapping them and just um, see, I didn't even get this side on there. Um, so this is bigger, obviously, than the lure. So um, it's actually like the loop of material comes in like a, it's all wrap. It's like a, a loop. See, it's like a tube of loop of material and then they just wrap it up into bunches or whatever so I just left it in the, the tube and I just put the bait inside the tube you don't you could cut it apart if you want to but I don't know I did not in this case so I'm just gonna fold this over you know like just kind of fold it over and roll it up and uh, I'm gonna try and get it up and down straight as possible and then I'm going to do the next section. So I'm just trying to get it so where like the, you know, the diamonds are straight up and down as possible to make it look as, I guess, accurate as I can, if that's the right word. So it's kind of a pain in the butt. And um, you, if you get it, clo the closer you get it to the lure, though, the better it's going to turn out and the more uh, defined sky. Ugh. Scale, not sky. The more defined scale. I can't say that word today. I don't know what my freaking issue is. Scale pattern. My brain works faster than my mouth, if you can believe that. <clears throat> okay. So let me keep going on this. I'll pop back over to my to my Facebook comments so I can see if you guys are asking me anything. A wrap. That would be perfect for his ranger. Dang, I wish we could afford to put a wrap on his ranger. That would be freaking sweet, but probably probably out of our budget at this time. <laughs> I've seen some wrap boats out at the reservoir, and they're pretty sweet looking. But there's like one of the liquor stores in town wrapped some guy's boat, and it's it's really awesome. I don't even think he fishes tournament. I don't even know if he fishes tournaments either. They just I don't know. It's like a friend of his or something. Yeah, we would love to do that, but we've been, well, Chris runs the ABA tournaments, you know, which by the way, they're doing the classic today. And one of the, the guys that were in the lead yesterday, I don't think they are anymore, but we're a couple guys that fishes that fish Chris's tournament trail. They live out in Durango, Colorado, and um, they were leading at the end of the day yesterday. I think they might've got bumped today, but that was pretty cool because Colorado is not a place that's known for bass fishing, if you haven't guessed that. And um, those guys are pretty awesome. They've won a lot of a lot of his tournaments. So congrats to Ty and Nate on your good day yesterday and good luck. I think it's I think Saturday. I don't remember if it's two or three day. We did we went to the class, the Ranger Classic, um, two couple years ago, no, three years ago. And um, it was really fun. Havasu's, it's in Lake Havasu City, on Lake Havasu. <clears throat> we rented a house with some other guys that were fishing the tournament. It was fun. But we didn't get to go this year, just too much other stuff going on. But hopefully next year we'll get to go. 
So I don't know where I got off that tangent, but anyways, so this is a time consuming process and I'm sorry if I'm boring you. I ramble to entertain you, which is probably not very entertaining, but at least it's better than silence, right? All right, what else do we have any? You already, okay, yeah. All right, sorry, John. I, I can't remember everybody's name off. When I see your names on here, sometimes I don't. Did you email me? Is that why I can't remember? Is that why I don't coordinate? I don't correlate your Facebook profile with your name or your email or whatever. My memory's not good on. Um, if I've talked to you several times, I'll remember you. But at the very beginning, and especially during my show, I have the worst time trying to remember who's who. But if you've been following me for a while, I do. But I'll get better at that. Okay. So that's pretty good. It's pretty tight, I think, uh, as good as it's going to get anyway. Um, so that's what it takes. This is why this stuff is expensive, because this is how much work it, it takes to get this stuff right. Um, now. Let's see here. Hello, Matt. Hi, Mark. Thank you, Matt. DJ. London Bridge. Yes, that's correct. I have been there. Uh, yes, the swim bait. I'm going to ship that Monday, uh, Richard, when you, when I sent you your invoice, I didn't have a clear code yet. But look at it now. It's all shiny. I just have to take the rubber bands off. I painted this yesterday or i mean last week's show this is the gizzard shot i did for richard and then i have a couple more i gotta do now so uh what else cut it so you only pin one side um i don't really understand what you're saying there ed you lost me i'm sorry um i don't think there's any way Oh, you mean, you know, Ed, I don't think it would work that way because if you want to get the scales straight, you have to pin both sides. Otherwise, it'll they'll just be like all distorted and stuff. And um, I want them to be straight. So unfortunately, while that sounds like a good idea, it probably wouldn't work the way that I want it to work. So every, yeah, unfortunately. All right. So let's go ahead and do some colors. Um, I think what I'm going to do is a little bit of this color shift green. It's a green gold color shift, and I think it will it'll look good. So we'll start with that. And this is actually not an airbrush paint, but I don't think they do color shift paints um, airbrush ready. Um, I can't remember. I think. Um, Auto Air by Createx might have some, um, but they're not, I don't think they're the same colors as these. So these are fine to use. You can definitely spray these through an airbrush. You just have to thin them out and it's fine. That brand is Ceram Coat, but Folk Art makes the same colors as Ceram Coat. I'm not even sure they're not made by the same company. But anyways, so we'll do a little bit of this down the middle and then I'll do a little more green green color on the um, top side. Thank you, David. I appreciate the kind comments. Um, but David, to answer your question, $100, it's probably, it probably won't be that $100. It's probably not that much, but just send me a message. <clears throat> it has to be really big if it was, if it did charge you $100. And so probably not that much. Okay. Uh, let's go down the middle here with this, and then um, I will back blend some pearl white probably on the bottom, and then I'll do a little bit more of a darker green on the top. So I'm just going right across the middle here, nice and lightly. So this comes out almost like a goldish uh, green color. And then we can uh, dull it a little bit in a minute here with some um, white not, or pearl white. Like I'll show you what I'm talking about. And then I'm going to do the other side. So I'll show you what this looks like real quick here. So 
it's like a gold green, um, depending on how you turn it in the light. And I don't know how well, really hard to see on YouTube. Uh, there's just a lot of glare. Um, but if you watch me on Facebook, I don't know. From my computer, it doesn't look. It's hard to see the colors on YouTube. I don't have a really super fancy, expensive lighting setup, so that's part of the problem. I don't have, a, I don't have the, uh, I don't have a million followers, so I don't have that kind of production budget or the kind of time that that it takes to learn how to manage such a setup. So, um, I decided to go all the way up to the top with that color, and then I'm going to shade some. Um... I haven't decided yet what color I'm going to use. I have a, um, this is another green that uh, I have that I have never used. Somebody gave this to me who stopped painting. Well, where is it? Iridescent green. This is a pretty sweet color that I haven't really used yet. It's nice and shiny, but it's a little too bright, I think. I'm going to use um, a candy green. I might, uh, I think I'm going to use moss green actually is what I'm going to do because I think over top of this bright color shift, it's going to um, be, I think these other colors would possibly be a little bit too bright. That makes sense. So I'm going to take this color out and I'm going to switch to a moss green. Share the feed if you can, guys. I'd love to get, I've got, I'd love for people to see the info about the live sale. Um, or if you can, you know, share the live sale event, that'd be even better. And then um, during the event is a really good time to share it too. The only unfortunate thing about sharing it during the event is a lot of people will pop on and start bidding on things, thinking that I'm giving away everything for free. And they start claiming items, not realizing it's not just giveaways. Um, I've had that happen, and then people don't pay their invoices, and that kind of sucks. But it just sucks because the people who really wanted the items didn't get the items then. So that's why I'm going to do the live video, or I'm sorry, the tape video, um, explaining the rules so everybody knows what to expect. Detail moss green. It's a really um, necessary to have color for painting bass uh, lures because so many fish kind of have that greenish color, like bass and trout and crappie and bluegill all have some of that green in them. So I'm just going to go across the like the top sides and just kind of fan it downward a little bit. The live sales, the one of the few times you get to see Chris on camera too. He doesn't um he goes live for his tournament stuff. He doesn't come on my show because we got the kids and somebody's gotta keep their keep them in line. So the moss is like it's a little bit almost too earthy. So I'm going to probably have to hit this with um, another green, like a darker, um, I think an emerald green might be good, but I'm going to ponder it for a moment. It's almost like a, you know, a very primary color green, sort of. And then um, you've used moss green with a drop or two of black. Yep. And I'm going to do some black shading as well. That's a good idea, though. I haven't done it that way. I've never mixed those two colors, I don't think. Well, no, I take it back. I have. I've mixed those two colors when I've done, like, bass markings, you know, like the bass um, largemouth stripes and stuff. I've mixed black and brown and green and stuff like that. I primarily uh, use lacquer paints now, and they're just different. Um, so the way I mix them, I think that's probably a good idea. I mean, it depends how bright you want this, I guess. I don't know. But I think the color shift, the color shift green is a good color for the crappie. Um, it's kind of like, cause they kind of got that yellowish green and this is really what, that's really what this color is, is kind of a yellowish green. 
Um, pearlized green is um, what I'm going to do, I think. Or I haven't decided. I think this is candy green. But I'm not 100% sure because the label's not on here. And like I said, I inherited this. I'm sitting here. I don't know if I want to pearl it. Let me mix this up and see what it sprays like. I have a friend who painted lures um, for a long time and he quit and he sent me everything that he had. And uh, I actually need to send him some lures this, this uh, winter because it, the only, the trade was that like I paint him some stuff periodically and send it to him. It was a pretty good tra trade off because I got a lot of stuff out of it. So I'm up for trades. I am up for trades sometimes. This is kind of bright, so I don't know. I'm going to do it anyway, and we're just going to go with it, okay? If it doesn't work, I just won't do it again at the end of the world. I'm just brightening that up just a smidge. And then we're, we're going to go over it with some black at the end anyways, and that'll just really kind of soften it up too. It's kind of a bright, it's really a bright green lighter than I thought it was going to be. So it must be a candy. I haven't used it before. All right. I'm just going to set this real quick. And then um, let's do some, uh, let's do some penciling. So this is a Jaco Gantrell 6.1 inch. I think the weight is like 2.1 ounces, I believe, if I'm, my memory serves me right. And um, this is a cool bait because it has um, rotating eyelets. So every single eyelet, um, both hook eyelets and then the leader eyelet are rotating. So they move freely, which is, is nice. Anyhow. All right. So I've got some stencils from... These are good ones um, from Anarchy Models, the splotchy stencils. The splotchy stencils, uh, this is the medium and this is the large one. And then this is the small, which I might not even use on this bait because it's a big bait. And then this is actually um, a taxidermy, like an image of a taxidermy stencil I found online. I have no idea who makes it. And I just, um, I, I copied the image, I saved the image, and then I made a file, like I made a PNG file for my Cricut. I'm, I have a Silhouette Cameo, but it's like basically the same thing as a Cricut and cut this out. And then I haven't even weeded the whole thing, but this is another one I could, I could use too. And it's almost, I mean, it's very super similar to this. So anyways, I'm going to start with um, like some bigger stuff and then mix in some smaller stuff along with it let me check um yeah black and moss green for bass markings is good and you might want to mix a little bit of sepia in with that too and then it gives you that muddy blackish green color um what is it that i add to the paint before i spray it it is reducer so this is just um it's i think 4013 reducer by createx and I just put it in here so that it's easier to be accurate, kind of squeezing it out because it comes in a bottle like this. And this is a mess to pour out. So I just put it in one of these ketchup-like things to make it easier to just put small amounts in without spilling everywhere. Um, this color would work great for perch. Yeah, maybe it could. Yeah, if you, yeah, you could probably do it for perch, I would think. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just pop over to my reference photo so I can kind of strategically place some of these uh, markings. So I'm just going to do a little bit of black. And you know what? I, left, I told you I left my... Hang on one second while I find it. Here it is. Nope, that's not black. Sorry. My bad. I don't have a clue. Oh, black, where are you? Okay, no worries. I'll just grab the big in, the big black. This is my big black. Um, so I'll just put, there's still some green. So I usually I pre-reduce my black. 
so that I can just, it's ready to go. But I just put like three drops in there and then I'll just reduce it. And I'll reduce it quite a bit. So I did like half and half ish, maybe a little more reducer than that. And then just give it a good stir. I like using these disposable paintbrushes to um, stir my paint. The bristles make it a little easier to get this stuff mixed. And then I just rinse it out afterwards. So I'm going to use this big stencil here and I'm just going to do some big stuff first and then maybe like across the top and then I'll work my way down with some smaller stuff um, and do it sort of random and we'll just kind of see what happens. So you might not be able to, I might be able to put this up on here so you guys can see sort of what I'm doing. Let me see if I can pin this up here so you can see a little better what I'm doing. I don't know if I have anything to hook this on to that's like accessible. Sort of. That's the problem with all this. I don't know if I can or not. Maybe not. We'll see if that holds. <laughs> it's kind of risky. Okay. I know the angle's not that great, but um, we'll, we'll see what we can do with it. So I'm just going to go like downward here, starting at the top. And um, just do some random big ones throughout. This is really thin paint, like thinner than I, I probably made it too thin. Um, the nice thing about the crappie, though, is like you don't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfect. And if you're doing it over a scale, then... Um, even better because it'll it won't matter as much if they're not perfect and honestly if the spots aren't like super crisp it'll probably look a little bit more natural so you can even hold the stencil you know it doesn't have, have to be super tight against the lure the accuracy of the scales is more important probably than the accuracy of the stencil um like keeping your scales in place versus worrying about your stencil being perfect okay so i'm going to go down here a little bit and then i'm going to shade over a lot of these with a little bit of um white scaling i have no idea how it's going to work i'm just doing a guess i'm doing a guess to see how it's going to work i'm trying a new little bit of a new technique tonight and if it turns out poopy, then the other side, I'll do something different to redeem myself. Okay, so this side now, let me loosen this one up. And I'm going to try a little bit of a white pearl over that at an angle. And we're going to see um, if we can't like mute a few of those to make them look more like more of a shadow underneath. My uh, my brushes just get kind of stuck if I after I don't use them for a little while. So I'm going to take some um, those are the same thing. Okay. So this is just some metallic white auto air paint and I'm going to thin this down a little bit and you have to because it's thick and then I'm just going to spray it at an angle um, backward and I'm going to just kind of um, create a little bit of a shadow. I don't know how it's going to work. But... I'm working on like some of these I've been messing around with some like texture techniques, and I don't really have anybody telling me what to do. I'm just kind of playing with it to see if I can figure out how to get some more of these realistic looking patterns. Okay. 
So that's just going to like give them a shadowy look. And we'll see how it turns out when I take off the mesh. If it looks like poop, oh well. Now you know not to do that. That's the way I see it, I guess. And then I don't think I need my, uh, oh, thanks. I don't think I need my uh, reference photo for a little while here. I might come back to it when I do the face texture, but up until then, I don't think I really need it. So I'm going to go back and do some more splotches. All right. <laughs> this is the this is a knockoff of the um, the Jackal Gantarell 6.1 inch swim bait. It's a 2.1 ounce um, swim bait. It has swivel hook, uh, hook hangers. And um, yeah. It's a nice day. Somebody called it a bass. And I'm like, I don't know. It has like an ear flap on the mold. And I'm like, how is, I don't know. Looks like a bluegill to me. But I don't know. I'm like, whatever. I'm going to make it a crappie today. Because uh, the one thing I really like about this bait, I like a smooth canvas. You know, you see, for example, this is a bait that I've had sitting here forever that I never did finish. It's got a lot of texture on it, and while that might look realistic in the mold, it's a it's really hard to paint detail on it because um, a lot of the techniques you use require like a flat surface to make them pop, and I don't like all that texture sometimes. It makes it hard to show off the different paint, you know, art. It makes it harder to show off your artistic techniques or whatever. They just don't show up as well. Anyway, one thing I like about this bait is it's smooth. So the whole thing is smooth. Um, and so I can really, you can really make um, your technique, uh, make it look really realistic with just paint instead of um, relying on that like fake texture or whatever that they put on it. Um, and that's what I, kind of like a Strike King, you know, like a Strike King or a Rapala crankbait. The paint jobs really pop on those because there's there's not all that stupid texture in the way. I wish I could get square bills like that that were good quality, but I don't think there's any manufacturers that make blanks um, with that smooth texture. So I have to repaint Strike Kings, which is fine. Um, but obviously, like, it's more expensive up front to repaint originals. So did I paint this? I painted it going backwards, didn't I? Okay. So this is again metallic, um, auto air metallic, fine metallic white. And I'm just misting it at an angle over this whole thing to give it a little bit of a shadow over the black spots. I'm going to need some more paint, I think. I just ran out. I didn't put that much in there. <laughs> What black brush is it? Um, that is a um, Badger Extreme Patriot 105. Um, and I love it. I use mostly Badger airbrushes, but I do have a, an Eclipse and I also love my Eclipse. So I don't know. I don't think you can really go wrong either way. The parts for the Badger are a little cheaper. And um, so that's one plus, but you don't need to replace parts very often on an Eclipse either. I don't, I'm trying to remember if I've replaced any parts on mine. Besides, a, I don't think only a needle, maybe. So I have like my stack of dirty brushes over here. This is my, this is my Eclipse. So I don't think, I think it's dirty. So it needs to be clean. But anyway, I use both. And I think you're okay either way. The Badgers are cheaper. You can get good deals on them. Um, Ken runs a sale every year for his birthday. And I think it's coming up here soon where you can get, um, you can get really super good deals. 50% off, I think, on all of the, all of his airbrushes. And uh, he does it once a year uh, around his birthday, and it's a really good deal. So you can you could get like two eclipses. I'm sorry, two Patriots for the same price. 
easily for the same price, maybe even three, for the same price as um, one Eclipse. I personally don't think there's a big quality difference between the two. I would say that um, the Eclipse is known to be the gold standard for airbrushes, and it is definitely a good airbrush. So it's really up to you. Most people have a strong preference between Patriot or between Badgers and Alada, and I am like that one rare person that doesn't really care. So. <clears throat> See you, John. Thank you. Um, you got a new bait idea. All right. Let me know. Let's do some small spots. How's that sound? So this is uh, the medium. Um, this really needs to be cleaned. Um, and these, I paint mostly with lacquer paint. So I just soak these babies in lacquer thinner, and it comes right off. You could probably just wipe them with, like, um, something soaked in lacquer thinner like a cotton ball. Uh, but if they're coated heavily with a water-based paint, you can just soak them in some rubbing alcohol and it'll come right off. Just let it sit for a little while and then you can just rub it off. So these are really nice. They're by Anarchy Models. You can just look them up online. They're in the UK. So if you see UK, that is correct. It is a UK-based company. And it, they sh the shipping is not too it's not too bad, so it takes about my my last order I think only took like a week and a half to get here but of course there's there's issues right now with shipping so I think everybody knows that unless you live under a rock right now that there are lots of shipping issues so yeah a few weeks to get them but they're worth the money for sure they're nice texture stencils. There's more companies in the U.S. that have been making good texture stencils, too. Um, Insane Custom Stencils uh, has been around a long time, and he's been doing some really nice um, texture stencils. And um, Whitmore Farms, which is I know a weird name, but I think they do some other kinds of business, too. But he has some really good ones, too. And I believe... Um, Shane over at Sugar Tick Custom Lures sells Whitmore Farm stencils now. And I think maybe Backwater Outfitting is selling insane custom stencils, but don't quote me on that because I can't remember for sure if that's correct. So I'm just doing some of the smaller spots over top of what, you know, I just misted over top of the bigger spots. And I really don't have a plan. I'm just going... I'm going all over the place with random dots. So, so far, it's kind of looking like that. And I'm just going to keep going for a little bit, if that's okay with y'all. My southern, I lived in Texas for like two and a half years. So, there's my southern side coming through. And I have a family in Louisiana, so. They speak y'all. So again, it's a bit of a tedious process, but you know, you just kind of randomly throw these stencil spots down until you feel like you got enough. So that's looking pretty good to me right now. I'm gonna do some on the tail, just the small ones on the tail because they do have spots on the tail. So we'll do some on the tail and I'm just gonna use like the smaller one for that and just go all over the tail. And then this will get misted over. The t the fins on the crappie are pretty dark, so that'll get misted back over as well with some black on top of that. Just you'll still be able to see those spots hanging through there. So that's how that looks now. Now we'll do the other side, okay? Okay. That's how my dog speaks in my brain. Okay. That's my dog in my brain. All right. You guys got dog? Who has a dog? What kind of dog do you have? I'm curious. Do you have a dog? Tell me what kind of dog you have. We just went to the dog park today. 
We have a golden retriever named Sage. And she's two. All right. Still six of six people on YouTube. I'm surprised more people don't watch on YouTube. All right. So again, it's a slow, tedious process. So if you're bored, I'm sorry, but this is just really how it works. I just sit here and do this all day. Once I do a pattern, um, you know, a couple times, then it goes a lot faster. But right now I'm, I'm doing something I haven't done exactly this way before. So it, it'll take me a little bit longer just to make sure that I'm not like overdoing it or underdoing it. <laughs> that try, I still haven't fixed that, that tiny clash KO that I Got pink paint all over the belly the other day. Still haven't fixed that. And I was just sitting there taunting. As soon as I get the rest of the custom stuff done that I have in queue, I'll fix it. It'll be for sale then. Cutthroat trout, not golden trout. Sorry. I keep wanting to say golden trout and it's not. Okay, so that looks pretty good too. Let me do the tail over here. I'm going to have to pull this. I have to pull. This is not. That's okay. Again, it's not going to matter too much if it's super accurate. So I'm just doing spots on the tail. And then um, the fins, I'm probably going to have to do after I take all this stuff off because I already, obviously, I pinned over them. So I can't do them right now. But while I have this on here, I'll do these. Okay. Right. So now um, you used to have three, two labs and a chihuahua. Now you just have a little guy. Corgi and lab. Oh, Australian wire hair griffin. A winner's dog. I don't know what that is. Very cool. A Yorkie. Yes. My, uh, my daughter said she wanted a Yorkie at one point. Right lately, her her want is a Great Dane and a pug puppy. She's not getting any of those things, by the way. We have um, one, and I'm good with that. So, okay, here's where I get a little bit. Um, here's where I get a little bit, like, Duck is this line that goes across the mid the midline of the crappie. I always want to put it in there, but I, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to make a stencil for that because I can't. I don't think I can draw a line that fine that perfect, and that upsets me that I can't figure that out. But maybe one day. So let's uh, do some shading across the top while I still have the scaling on, and then um, I'll take the scaling off and finish everything else. So I'm going to go the opposite direction over the top sides with this black, okay? And I'm going to go straight from nose to tail. This paint is really thin, so um, I don't overdo it. And I could still overdo it. It's very possible. But I'm trying not to. Okay, I'm going to um, heat set that. That's kind of what it's looking like right now, if you can see that. I'm going to give you a little bit of a closer look at that. And then um, I'll do the other side. I'm just doing a quick hair dry on it to keep it from smearing, and then I'll do the other side. And that's just a quick um, heat set to keep it from smearing. 
if the scale pattern moves a little bit, it could smear the paint. Um, if I just moving it around with my hand, I end up happening to. Okay. I'm going to dry this real quick and I'm going to compare it to the other side to see if they're even. And then um, we'll take the scales off. The other side's just a smidge darker, so let me just give this a few more passes. Okay, I'm going to call that good. Do a quick dry on this. And I'll take this stuff off. Alright, so now come the clips off. So all 400 million of these come off. I'll pop back over here to see what everybody's saying. A wiener dog dressed in a hot dog bun for Halloween. That's so funny. Is it is your is your dad's wiener dog like an attack dog? Because every like every like miniature dachshund or dachshund I've ever known is like um <laughs> they're feisty. My neighbor's dog used to try and bite me all the time. I was a kid, you know, and her my neighbor's sister had a a dachshund and she would always try and bite me when I came over. She didn't like me. I guess I was bad influence or something. So that's what it looks like now, but we're not done, so. Don't uh, don't get too crazy critical on me. We're going to do some shading on top and some more stenciling to get some spots. So I'm going to go with a small one here. <clears throat> Thanks, guys. You're all too, too kind. So I took the small. I did use this. I am going to use the small splotchy stencil here for the fins on top. And I'm going to put some uh, pretty good dark dots on here just to, you know, make sure it shows through because I'm going to eventually, I'm going to color these in fairly black. So you want, you want a little bit of that dot, those splotchy dots to show through. And I'll just do each bin individually here. I think I just ran out of paint. Sorry. I have to get a little bit more of this. <clears throat> I didn't put a whole lot in there because I wasn't thinking I was going to use much. Okay. That's all better now. Coyotes. Oh, yeah. We have them too. Your guy doesn't bark at anyone. That's awesome. Mine does. Yeah, we have coyotes here too. I actually, I in the last month, I've seen two uh, right outside the edge of my yard. One time was in the middle of the day, and the other one was right around sunset. And um, it did not seem scared of our dog or the neighbor's dogs, but they were all going crazy. And I so I poked my head out. And we don't have a fence either. We have a like an invisible fence set up. So I, you know, I'm like, well, she didn't even try to go. She won't. She's terrified of it, you know. And uh, so she won't blow through it. And so they're just kind of sitting there in the standoff in the backyard. And my dog's big, though. She's big. I think she's too big for a coyote to go after, but um, yeah, definitely you got to be careful with the little pets around here too. We live right on the boundary of a state park, so there's a lot of, um, there's BLM land and the state park boundary is right across the street, so there's plenty of 
animals that wander around in the dark around here. So we have mountain lions too, but I mean, you don't see those hardly ever. Some people night fishing have seen them for sure though. Like a lot of people um, will like carry guns just in case. Um, the birthday sale, no, that the birthday sale I was talking about was Badger Airbrush. So he does the birthday sale when it's his birthday. I think somewhere it's in December, maybe or January. I forget. Um, I'm doing a just a live sale before Christmas, and that will be on my Facebook page. And uh, there's a post uh, with an event created with um, the time and everything. And then I'm gonna make a video this week to explain how the sale works, so everybody is knowing what to expect going into it and there's not you know too much confusion and i'll also i'll type it something out as well in case you don't like watching videos you don't have to watch it yep attitude over her toys <laughs> that's funny my dog is so passive she's um she's a total wimp she'll just like let you take whatever she won't challenge other other dogs for anything so I'm gonna do some white texture, white pearl texture. I'm gonna leave this black in here at my own risk. I say at my own risk because it can tend to dry in there a little bit. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of pearl white testers and I'm gonna put it in my other brush and just reduce it a little bit. And then I'm gonna do some white dot texture on the face. They have a little bit of a white dot dot like texture on the face and I'm going to do some of that and then I'm going to do some black dot like texture and then we're going to do uh, I'm going to do a little bit of pearl shading on the belly area and um, we have to do a pin here still too so I need to get moving it's taking too long this is a um this is the modeled stencil by anarchy models and I'm just going to go um kind of around the the gill plate area with this and um, I'm just going to create like um, a white texture pattern basically and I'll show you what it looks like in just a second when I get done. Okay. So it's hard to see sometimes unless you're in the right light. Somebody's coming out here. Probably the time I'm taking too long. So if you can see that, I don't know if you can see that in the light or not, but I'm going to do the other side now. Am I taking too long? I'm alive. Yeah. Oh, okay. I try to do this in an hour, but sometimes I take too long. All right. So there's just some white texture. Um, I think you guys know what I'm talking about on the face of the fish there. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit of um, a misting of this pearl color on the bottom along the edge. do my black spots on the bottom fin on this side. I forgot to do my black spots right here on the bottom fin. So let me do that real quick. Missed it. There we go. This paint, this Tester Aztec, it's a beautiful pearl color, but this crap dries in your airbrush so fast. You really have to be uh, on it. If you leave it in there too long, you'll have a mess on your hands. Okay, so it's just a pearl white. I just put a pearl white along the belly area. I went up a little bit too high over here. Um, you live and you learn. It's a little too high, but uh, okay. my bad. A 
Okay, now I'm going to do a few um, black splotches on top of the scales, and then I'm going to do the, the final shading on top, and then um, the spin, and then I'll be done. Um, and I may, I might add a little bit of green still. I haven't decided yet. I'm going to see how it looks once I get done with this. It's been still kind of... Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's really hard because some crappie are really not very green and some of them are really green. And so it's hard to decide if you want to do more or not. Everybody has a different idea of what they should look like based on what the fish in their local uh, waters look like. And everybody's waters are different, and it depends on the time of the year, too. So it's hard to decide sometimes how much color you want to put on these. So I'm just doing a little bit of um, spots on top here of everything and just giving it a little bit of depth. So there's spots over the scales, spots under the scales. Spots under some shading under the scales, and it just it just gives it a little bit more um, of a realistic look. It's time consuming. You have to be patient to do this. <laughs> patient and persistent, I guess, is what, what it takes. All right. So that's kind of what it looks like after that's done. So, and then I'm going to do um, a little bit on the face with this on the bottom. This is just another small texture stencil. I don't know, that might have been a little too much, but I don't really care. I'm just going to leave it. Just do a little texture on the eyes there. I'm just playing around because I don't really know right now what I'm doing. <clears throat> um, just putting a few extra spots here on the other side over top of um, the scales. My black is getting a little temperamental in my gun. Um, probably have some tip dry. I have a lot of tip dry actually. That could be why. Okay. Much better. Okay. But now it's coming out really fast. I really like the way those little spots turn out on the other side. I mean, I'm going to have to do it, but it looks better with the medium spots. I'll show you the difference. It's just kind of a hindsight is 2020 thing on that. So the spots, I did these little like texture spots over here. I don't like how that looks very much. And then on this side, I did more of like the, ir the irregular spots. And I think that looks better right along the eye area. Now I'm going to do some shading. I'm going to shade around the eyes. And I'm just kind of lightly shading in the eye area. And then um, the nose is going to be basically black. So a lot of that gets covered up, but I know. Anyway, and then along the spine, uh, I'm just going to go mostly solid black, but it'll take me a few layers to get to solid black. The fins, you just, I'm just going like in a downward, like gray here, and they'll get some of that, like, indirect spray 
And if they're not dark enough, then I'll mist over them again. White crappie is one that I've done a couple. I did one live. I didn't like the way it turned out. Um, and that's one that I haven't, I don't feel like I've gotten um, a very realistic version of that done yet. It's harder, I think. White crappie is harder because there's not, it's so much more subtle, the colors and um, a little goes a long way creating that pattern. So it's a little bit more difficult, I think. And I haven't quite gotten that pattern down the way that I'd like to. I'm just kind of darkening the tips of the fin on the bottom. And again, just, I'm just shading the top. So now uh, I'm going to do the rest of the fin here. I'm going to make an outline around it. So usually what I'll do is I'll either just like grab a piece of paper and like cut it to the shape of the fin or I will um, grab like a curved stencil that I have on hand that fits okay. And I'll use that to make the fin shape, but I'm just going to see if I can maybe just make this cut. Um, whoops, wrong side. There. So that see that see how that um, matches up with the shape, and I just guessed matches up with the shape. And then I'm just going to shade a lot on the edge of the fin on the top, and we're going to kind of make an outline around it to make it look like a shadow fin, which is kind of what they look like in real life. Oh, that came out too fast. I hate that. I'll show you what I'm doing here in just a minute. Now along the bottom, just kind of barely touching the edges of the fin, and I'll show you in a second. Most of the spray is going on the stencil, and or yeah, on the stencil, and then you're just getting a lot of overspray onto the fin. I'm getting to the part, the point, the point in the night now where this is taking too long and the got a lot of tip dry on my brush. Usually I paint faster than this, so I don't have that problem, but um, when I'm doing my live show and I'm creating something that I've never done before, it's, it takes longer and my brush can be kind of a butthead. All I'm doing, since you can't really see, is just spraying on the stencil, like lining it up, and it's just over spraying onto the fin on the top. <clears throat> and I'm kind of just going around it. You can make a fin, you can make a whole fin stencil to go around the whole fin, but I'm too, like, I don't want to do that right now. I'm just not into it. So I'm, I just improvise sometimes. And just use what I got. because it's easier than starting like okay so that one actually turned out a little better because my um brush didn't get unruly with me so let's find an eyeball um green wise i'm gonna leave it i'm gonna leave it how it is you you could go brighter you could go lighter and um there's no right or wrong i don't think in this situation um you could do it either way so these are eights, I think, um, but I'm not 100% sure. Eight millimeter eyes, and I could be totally wrong, but we'll find out here in just a second. If it's wrong, I'll be able to tell pretty fast. Oh, my messness. Okay. It's not eight. Yeah, I think it is eight. So I, this one is pretty accurate, but I've had some people say it's too silver. This is a, this is by, this is a, I think the brand Tygo Fly makes one that's really good, but it only comes in certain sizes. And then this is what 
I guess is referred to as a 4DI, like it has more depth than some of the 3DIs have. And um, it's kind of a brownish grayish color. And um, some people have told me that crappies have to be gold. So another option is a down looker. And I don't know if I have an eight and a gold down looker, but I'm looking for it. I don't remember if I have one or not. Oh, I have this one. That's right. Okay. I don't have a gold down looker in the traditional like mega bath style. But I do have these other ones that are, um, yeah, I have red. But I don't think I have gold in that size. Oh, oh my God. How did those get in there? I've been pissed looking for those. I'm telling you right now. Yeah, I don't think I have a gold. I don't know why I never ordered those in that size. I guess I need to make sure I do that. So this is a down looker gold. I, um, these are, I think I got these from Backwater Outfitting. But you can order them on AliExpress probably too. Um, you'll get them a lot faster from Backwater Outfitting. Especially right now when things are taking 400 years to get here. So anyways, uh, once you get the, the tape off the hook hangers, they do swivel. Oh, there goes that tape. So these do move. And so does the front one. This one moves too. So... You got to be careful when you're clear cutting them that you don't get them stuck. But essentially there is the black crappie. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you check out, check out the, the sale on uh, next Saturday. And I will post some details on my Facebook page. Uh, I'll post a video with details. And I will also um, post instructions on like how to participate in the sale and what kind of giveaways and discounts I'm going to do and everything sometime um, midweek this week. So I hope you all have a wonderful night. Let me make sure I didn't miss any questions. Um, crappies are always looking up to feed. Really? Well, crap. I'll turn that around then. Thanks for that tip. I did not even realize that. But thanks, guys. I appreciate it. And um Running out of places to put tackle means buy more. <laughs> That's funny. You guys are funny. Okay, you guys. I think I... Oh, baby cows? No. All right, guys. Have a good night. Take care.